John Gotti. The name itself conjures images of sharp suits, dangerous alleyways, and whispered secrets in the underworld. Widely known as the Teflon Don, he was an enigma who seemed untouchable. But what drives a man to become one of the most feared figures in organized crime? And how did he orchestrate some of the most chilling acts of vengeance the Mafia world has ever witnessed? In this riveting exploration, we're about to uncover the top 10 most audacious acts of retribution by John Gotti. Ready to peer into the shadowed psyche of the mob's most infamous Don? You know, it went down with Gotti. I mean, it was, it was either him or Gotti at that point, and, and John made the move. And, you know, in our life, um, there's no election process. Number one, the murder of Paul Castellano, 1985. The assassination of Paul Castellano in 1985 is not just another page in the archives of organized crime. It's a chapter unto itself. A storm was brewing within the Gambino crime family, with John Gotti, an ambitious player, at its epicenter. With Castellano reigning supreme yet facing mounting internal dissent, Gotti saw a door ajar, one that could lead him to the throne. On a frosty December night, with Manhattan streets bathed in the glow of Christmas lights, the paths of Castellano and his underboss, Thomas Bellotti, led them to the Sparks Steakhouse. Little did they know that the restaurant's facade would soon witness a moment that would be etched into Mafia lore. Gotti's men, cloaked in anticipation, unleashed a violence that shattered the winter's eerie stillness. This audacious act didn't just signal the end of Castellano's reign, it heralded the rise of a new Mafia titan. The ripples from that fateful night resonated far and wide, showcasing Gotti's sheer audacity and resolve. For Gotti, the Spark Steakhouse hit was more than just a claim to power, it was a manifesto of his unyielding drive to dominate the underworld. Number 2. The Killing of Thomas Bellotti, 1985 In the heart of Manhattan, as Paul Castellano's body lay still on the cold asphalt, John Gotti's rise to the pinnacle of the Gambino crime family was teetering on the edge of uncertainty. The underworld is an arena of shadows and secrets, where trust can be as elusive as a wisp of smoke. Understanding this, Gotti had to act decisively to solidify his succession to the Gambino throne. Enter Thomas Bellotti, Castellano's right-hand man and a formidable force in his own right. With Castellano gone, Bellotti's stature and influence posed a possible threat to Gotti's burgeoning leadership. This was a risk Gotti wasn't willing to take. The takedown of Bellotti was both rapid and ruthless, and with his fall, Gotti didn't just eliminate a threat, he issued a stark warning to anyone who dared to oppose him. The move was strategic, chilling, and undeniably effective in cementing Gotti's hold over the family. Number 3. The Murder of Robert DiBernardo, 1986 Within the criminal underworld, Trust is as elusive as a shadow, and suspicion often looms larger than loyalty. John Gotti navigated these murky depths with an unerring instinct for self-preservation. His dominance wasn't solely built on vanquishing external foes, but also about nipping potential rebellion from within. Robert DiBernardo, once a trusted member of Gotti's fold, soon found himself tangled in this web of distrust. Whispers of betrayal surrounded DiBernardo, making him, in Gotti's eyes, a potential threat to the Empire's stability. Gotti sanctioned the execution of DiBernardo not only as a response to perceived betrayal, but also as a clear, public proclamation to friend and foe alike. The message was crystal clear. Within the realm Gotti controlled, loyalty was paramount, betrayal was intolerable, and the price of crossing him was life. Number 4. The Assassination of Frank DeChico, 1986 Frank DeChico stood tall within the Gambino family, sharing a bond with John Gotti forged in trust and shared ambitions. Yet, the erratic nature of the Mafia often manifested in unforeseen betrayals and violent reprisals. While the assassination of Paul Castellano heralded Gotti's meteoric ascent, it also created a cauldron of hatred and vendettas within the family. 
As Gotti's influence continued to grow, a complex web of unforeseen adversaries conspired to undermine his rule. In a jarring act of violence, De Chico's existence was obliterated by a car bomb. Though the orchestrators of this ambush dwelled in the shadows of speculation, the consensus hinted at dissenters within the family's ranks. For Gotti, De Chico's violent end ignited a fierce resolve. The brutal end of his distrusted ally served as a stark testament to the treacherous waters Gotti sailed. Where disloyalty could emerge without warning, and where revenge was meted out with chilling exactitude. Number 5. Retaliation Against Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, 1991 In the dangerous domain of organized crime, betrayal is more than just treason. It's a defiant affront to authority. Few navigated these treacherous waters with the cunning and tenacity of John Gotti. So, Gotti's reaction was immediate and ferocious when his right-hand man, Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, turned coat and provided damning testimony against him. Burning with a thirst for retribution, Gotti could not let Gravano's defection stand unchecked. Within the Mafia's warped coat of honor, Becoming a state's witness was an unpardonable act, warranting the harshest punishment. Once a brother-in-arms sharing Gotti's deepest secrets and endeavors, Gravano was now marked as a turncoat deserving of swift retribution. The mandate to eliminate Gravano embodied Gotti's hallmark cold decisiveness, the underlying message resonating with chilling clarity. Betrayal, no matter from whom, would be met with lethal force. To escape demise, Sammy the Bull Gravano was forced into hiding under the protection of the government. His fate is a grim testament to Gotti's unyielding quest for vengeance. It echoed a stark message in Gotti's underworld. Loyalty was non-negotiable, and the toll for its breach was irrevocably fatal. Number 6. The Killing of Louis de Bono, 1990 In the twisted structure of the Gambino crime family, Loyalty wasn't just a virtue, it was a life-saving currency. The formidable chieftain, John Gotti, grasped this tenet with an iron grip. In 1990, his relentless insistence on absolute allegiance prompted him to sanction the hit on Louis de Bono, a member whose supposed disloyalty cast a shadow over the family's honor. To Gotti, any whiff of betrayal demanded swift and severe reprisal. De Bono had, in Gotti's eyes, overstepped an invisible yet inviolable boundary. Such transgressions rendered him untrustworthy and a chink in the family's armor. De Bono's demise was a calculated display of Gotti's indomitable control. The act resonated with an unequivocal warning. Loyalty wasn't to be tested. Louis De Bono's fate underscored a haunting truth of the Mafia realm. Loyalty was more than an expectation. It was a requirement, and deviations from it came at a deadly price. Number 7. Retaliation Against John O'Connor, 1987 By 1987, John O'Connor, a reputed drug dealer, was enshrouded in murmurs of mistrust. Allegedly, he'd committed the cardinal sin, cooperation with law enforcement. Ever the sentinel of his dominion, John Gotti decreed a brutal reprisal that would send shockwaves through the underworld's ranks. Gotti's men, driven by a zeal for retribution, were unleashed to mete out swift, pitiless justice. The message was unmistakable. Breaches in the Mafia's code of silence came with a grave cost, levied without a hint of compassion. O'Connor's chilling fate was a warning to anyone contemplating collusion with the law. Gotti and his ensemble affirmed their unwavering allegiance to the family through this brutal act. Their actions echoed a solemn promise. They'd go to any lengths to safeguard their illicit code. This grim episode reinforced a haunting maxim of the Mafia realm. Treachery would invariably invoke savage retaliation, and no soul was immune from its unforgiving grasp. Number 8. Revenge on Edward Garofalo, 1989 In the intricate dance of dominance within the Gambino crime family, John Gotti stood at the center, his reign both magnetic and menacing. 1989 bore witness to one of Gotti's cold, calculated reprisals, a move that forever altered the family's inner dynamics. In Gotti's tireless drive to reinforce his supremacy, 
Edward Garofalo, aligned with a rival faction, became an unwilling pawn and eventual casualty. Ever the mastermind, Gotti recognized the criticality of quashing competition to cement his hold on the family. Garofalo's influence was a looming shadow, a potential disruptor to Gotti's regime. In the ruthless realm of organized crime, such shadows were often snuffed out before they grew too long. Garofalo's execution was more than a mere hit. It was a grim testament to Gotti's unwavering authority. The act reverberated a clear warning. Those contemplating a challenge to Gotti's reign would face dire consequences. By orchestrating this vengeance, Gotti showcased his readiness to dispatch anyone, even from within his circle, who posed a threat. Garofalo's end painted a vivid portrait of the Gambino family's brutal dynamics, where power and position were perpetually at stake, defended through a relentless dance of violence and vengeance. Number 9. The Disappearance of John Favara, 1980 In the enigmatic shadows of organized crime, the line between personal tragedy and retribution often becomes indistinguishably thin. 1980 marked a harrowing episode in John Gotti's and his family's life, drawing in an unsuspecting individual into their ominous sphere. John Favara, an ordinary man devoid of any mafia connections, was trapped in a chilling narrative showcasing the dangerous ripple effects of the mob's world. Favara's unintentional yet devastating act, striking and killing John Gotti's young son, Frank, with his car, led to an outpouring of grief and rage within the Gotti clan. While no concrete evidence ties Gotti to Favara's mysterious disappearance, many speculate that the family's palpable anguish played a role in the unsettling events that followed. John Favara's vanishing resonates as an eerie testament to the pervasive influence of organized crime. It underscores that even those seemingly detached from this world can find themselves caught in its intricate web. This poignant tale exemplifies the vast reach of the Mafia, where personal anguish and retribution can merge, often obscuring the line between innocent bystanders and the lasting shadows of the underworld leaving behind wounds that may never fully mend. Number 10. Retribution against William Billy Bats Davino, 1970s Before John Gotti ascended to infamy as the formidable boss of the Gambino crime family, he was cutting his teeth in the unforgiving labyrinth of organized crime. Throughout the 1970s, under the tutelage of the influential mafia figure Neil Delacroche, Gotti began to carve out a reputation for himself, one colored by an unyielding thirst for power and retribution. At the epicenter of Gotti's early vendettas was William Billy Bats Davino, a member of an opposing crew. Frictions between Bats and Gotti's associates had steadily escalated, creating an atmosphere ripe for confrontation. When the tides of fate offered Gotti a shot at revenge, he seized it with chilling determination. Billy Bat's assassination wasn't just a violent act, it was a statement, a chilling prologue to Gotti's impending reign. It underscored Gotti's message to the world. Threats to his crew's integrity would be met with swift vengeance, a promise he would repeatedly uphold throughout his tumultuous career in the Mafia's shadowed corridors. John Gotti's life was a tapestry of violence and vendettas, a labyrinth of power plays and retribution. These chilling acts of revenge showcase a man who stopped at nothing to solidify his grip on the Mafia underworld. As we unravel the layers of Gotti's brutal legacy, one thing becomes clear. In the unforgiving world of organized crime, retribution was his currency, and he paid it without hesitation.